Let's get back into the episode today and let's get back into how and why tinnitus negatively impacts your sleep quality. And uh, most of the time, um, what we need to see is that not even your tinnitus disturbs your sleep quality, but your reaction to your tinnitus. So it's not the original symptom of the sound that you're experiencing, right? I also experienced tinnitus while being deaf on this ear and having this hearing aid in here as well. But it's very important to notice that it's not actually the tinnitus or the sounds that I am listening to and the sounds that I'm experiencing that are making it impossible or difficult for me to get to sleep or stay asleep, but my reaction to it. And I mentioned it at the start, often when we are focusing on a lot of things throughout the day, it's very easy to basically just have tinnitus in the background. Not for everyone, I know a lot of people will say this now, but for a lot of people that is the case and that's why they only struggle with tinnitus later at night when it's kind of quiet and there's silence and then the tinnitus comes up and it's blaring and that are and those are the moments in which dealing with tinnitus can be quite difficult and i completely understand that i myself had my fair share with struggling with sleep and i want to tell everyone that it, there is hope there are amazing tools and resources that are available in our community and that it will get to in a minute that can help you get to restful and sustainably sleeping six to eight hours uh, or whatever the sleep need that you might have is what you need on a day-to-day -day base. Right, um, then getting into the first part of our episode using tools of cognitive behavior therapy in order to improve your sleep quality, right? So if we base the assumption of tinnitus anxiety inducing your insomnia or not you not being able to go to sleep then we know that cognitive behavior therapy is enabling us to ask ourselves the right questions at the right moments right so for example if i would say if we say uh, uh, negative thoughts that are related to your tinnitus basically like oh my tinnitus is so loud that doesn't let me sleep well yes tinnitus of course if it's bugging us, if we are relatively early to tinnitus, can prevent us from falling asleep because we get hung up on experiencing this tinnitus and it's bothersome, right? But really noticing that the way you react to your tinnitus is what bothering you and not the sound itself maybe, although that's kind of maybe difficult to sort of discern, but uh, that is mostly what the reaction is like. Understanding and breaking open that negative reactive cycle and knowing and learning and teaching for yourself that just lying in bed, even with the tinnitus can be a restful experience. And then when you don't fall into this reactivity trap, it becomes much easier to fall asleep and to also stay asleep throughout the night. There are, of course, certain other great tools and opportunities that you can use. For example, guided uh, progressive muscle relaxation. There will be tons of uh, videos on YouTube that you can use for this, or I've been talking about this, and I even have an episode on my podcast here as well called Yoga Nidra. And Yoga Nidra is fantastic if you want to get into pre-sleep phase, really deeply relaxed state, someone really dis disembarking from your thoughts and anxiety thoughts and really going on to a journey where you can experience that tinnitus is there but you can come into a very restful place and then you can start to loosen up these thoughts, right? Talking about cognitive behavior therapy approaches, loosening up the thoughts that are very unhelpful for you. The unhelpful thought of saying, well, tinnitus is not letting me sleep or when I perceive it in the middle of the night, it's waking me up and I can't be going back to sleep. Well, of course, that's going to be difficult because you're behaving differently than if you would simply turn around and say, ah, it's just my tinnitus, put your head on the pillow again and sleep again. Me, for example, I mean, I've had tinnitus for 15 years now, but I sleep with an earplug at night and the other ear is deaf. So literally all I hear is my tinnitus. But I know, and over the years I've trained myself, that tinnitus is absolutely no obstructive thing in order to give me a restful quality of sleep and letting me lie down and just chill in my bed and be comfy and just having a good night's sleep, right? And as soon as you confirm that to yourself, I know it's, it's rather difficult at the start maybe, but there are amazing tools uh, to really put this structured and guided into action in our community. So I severely, like I really suggest you check it out for a two weeks free trial. The link is in the description below. Um, and there are great tools that we have in order to implement that, right? So the cycle of insomnia and tinnitus can then sort of be exacerbated, right? So your insomnia kind of sticks because of the tinnitus and tinnitus influences your insomnia and vice versa. 
right? And then what do we do? How do we go with acceptance and commitment therapy into helping you break that negative cycle? And not only using sort of all these practical tips that you can find for sleep hygiene or implementing these tools of cognitive behavior therapy, asking yourself, why am I reacting to my tinnitus like that? But really taking it up one notch. And that is acceptance and commitment therapy. Uh, I've discussed it largely in this podcast as well with uh, Rilana Chima. That was a fantastic episode I did with her. I really enjoyed that one where we talk about the relationship of acceptance and commitment therapy that is used, for example, in spider phobia, but also in insomnia. And I also largely use it for my tinnitus coaching purposes where by you basically with acceptance and commitment therapy, you enable the brain to re-tag your relationship with something as non-dangerous, right? So let me say this, when you are very tired and you haven't been able to sleep well for a while, then of course it's very easy to that becoming a habit so that not sleeping is the default. And then when you go to brush your teeth in the evening, basically your connection with sleep is, okay, I'm probably not going to sleep well tonight because I haven't been able to sleep well the last few nights and weeks, maybe even months, month, some people even years. But right? That is an correcting, uh, creating an underlying thought like, oh my gosh, I'm really struggling with sleep. Therefore, what can I do tonight? And you go kind of in problem solving mode and your brain turns on. And that's obviously, of course, a state in which you can absolutely not fall to sleep. Yeah. So the tools of acceptance and commitment therapy as also in the community or in my coachings, they will help you also managing insomnia properly in the way that we say it becomes natural for your brain to experience that. For example, one of the components that's very important is a big tip is being awake at night is something that's very normal and it's absolutely okay. So if you stop struggling against being awake at night, seeing your enemy, then slowly but steadily, you can learn that even if you're awake, it's not so bad. Eventually you will fall to sleep. And if you stop being obsessive and turning and tossing and turning and spending all this energy, then you will also feel next less tired the next day. Try it out. Four hours of sleep while not tossing and turning, but just resting and lying there is going to feel and a world different than four hours of tossing and turning and four hours of sleeping and being very upset. You'll feel a massive difference between those two, right? So within the tools and the strategies that we have in the community and that I have uploaded there, and I'm not going to mention it anymore, but it's a little bit too much to get into in one podcast episode that I'm producing myself today. But I thought that it would be relevant and important for you guys to hear this within the frameworks of acceptance and commitment therapy in the same way that they're very useful to getting you closer to habituation. They are also very, very useful in order to symbol to your brain, signal to your brain that it's not dangerous to not be sleeping at night because that keeps you from reacting further and further. Further anxiety, oh my God, I have to sleep because if I don't sleep tomorrow is crazy. Yes but that is keeping you stuck in fight or flight in the same way that using acceptance and commitment therapy to signal to your brain that experience in tinnitus is not so dangerous as your overshoot reaction of emotions that continue over and over again might suggest to you is something very, very important, very, very relevant. So using the tools that we have in the community, acceptance and commitment therapy, cognitive behavior therapy, and also reading my free guide, of course, there are a few of these examples in there. So if you go to tinnitus-guide.com, you'll find my free guide to tinnitus. And I will also put those links in the show notes so that we will one link where you can check all of these things out. And I really and sincerely hope that, um, yeah, helping you um, with uh, these kind of small tips and tricks to get to a little bit better sleep Sleep is something that you will uh, recognize that can help and benefit you to say that mindfulness is sort of another tool, focusing on the present sensations in your body, for example, uh, focusing on your air, on your head against the pillow or on your sheets against the leg, etc., can be helping you in bringing anxiety down and then getting to better sleep quality. Um, I think practical tips could be saying that if you want to find out more about this, practical tips could be really uh, reading a little bit more on CBT and sleep quality or ACT and sleep quality on our community or pretty much anywhere on the internet. There is fantastic tips out there. The key takeaways for today would be using CBT and ACT in order to get to, sleep, to, to better sleep quality with tinnitus is something that I can 
really, really recommend because I see many of my clients do it and you can really get better implementing a few tools and questioning your reactivity towards the tinnitus at nighttime and also seeing that that whole cycle is making it difficult for you to sleep and really see to see that you talk to your healthcare professional if it's getting a little bit worse to see that you can get help. And if you have any questions, you can always reach me at Frida at alteringtinnitus.com or uh, go to our community, sign up for the free trial. And yeah, I hope that this has been helpful and beneficial for you and looking forward to seeing you in the next episode. All the best. Goodbye.